So this is the first video of a five part video series based on my book, The Happiness Problem. We're gonna look at how we currently are thinking about happiness, why that's a problem, and how after understanding that happiness, we can move beyond happiness and start to live what I call a, a post-happiness uh, way of living. So to get a grip on how we are currently thinking about happiness. Uh, I speak a lot in the book about these kind of two fundamental capacities that we have, these mental capacities, the what some people call our divided mind. So these kind of cut to the core of what it means to be a human being. But these are also capacities that we share with almost every foraging animal. That is our capacities for control on the one hand and connection on the other and our capacities for control are all about basically getting and having stuff so we sort reality we sort our world into all the good things all the bad things the rights and wrongs the shoulds and shouldn'ts and then we use our capacities to make goals to make plans commitments to have as many and get as many of the good things as possible and avoid as many of the bad things as possible. So this is how we um, control our environment to our liking, it's how we change our circumstances for the better. So that's all very straightforward. Our capacities for connection are a little bit more subtle and nuanced. So by talking about connection, I don't just mean to refer to our relationships with our loved ones, our friends, family and so on. What I mean is something much more fundamental in terms of our connection with reality. So we talk of being in contact with the world, in uh, touch with what matters. And so our capacities for connection are all about uh, our ability to pay attention, not to everything we've already learned about what is good and bad, what we can get and have, but instead to everything we don't know, um, to the vast uncertainty uh, of our realities. So these are our capacities for emotions such as curiosity, for interest, for awe, wonder, compassion, forgiveness, hope, trust. They all enable us to pay attention to uh, the limits of our understanding, to gain a deeper uh, understanding of what matters, of what is relevant, of what's important, to get a kind of fresh insight or revelation about um, what we really care about. So these are kind of our two fundamental capacities that help us navigate the world. Control on the one hand, to, to use everything we already know to make things better, and connection to open up to everything we don't know, um, to, to understand um, the, ourselves, our relationships, and our wider environment in a deeper sense. What does that all have to do with happiness? Well, at least for the past 250 years, from the Industrial Revolution onwards, we've lived in an extremely control-based society. With all the opportunities and resources that Madonna, modernity has, has given us, uh, we have set about going to change almost every area of our lives. We now want um, to get the kind of perfect or meaningful uh, productive jobs. We want uh, relationships that are right for us, um, that inspire us. We want uh, families to be healthy and safe and happy. We want our bodies to be uh, in good shape. We want our minds to be uh, creative and stress-free. There's all sorts of ways in we are trying to change our circumstances to our liking. And happiness is almost the kind of viewed in our society as, as the culmination of this. If we can achieve if we can get and have all these things that we think are good in life, then it is happiness that results. Uh, we say things like, if only I had the perfect job, the loving relationship, the good health or whatever, then I'd be happy. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to improve our lives in various ways, but when we only look at happiness in terms of control, in terms of things we can get, 
and have in terms of outcomes that will make our life better, we quickly run into problems. And that will be the theme 